own sake. See, that's why the Bible is redundant. The Lord says things over and over because we're stiff-necked, hard-headed people. Right. Calm down and listen to one another. And more importantly, listen to this fight. Right? What does it mean? Right. What does the name Israel mean? Where does it mean? The breaking down of the name. Bring it out. The, the breakdown of the name. Okay, if I may ask you, why do you want to know that question, bro? Because we, we was over there discussing. Yeah, I'm just trying to understand what's going on. Right, and I was telling them that I'm a grand sheik and more science, and I'm about unification. Okay. I'm about being Christ here on earth. I'm about bringing unity and peace. Okay. And I understand what Israel means, but I wanted to hear what your perspective was. Well, you, well you'll well, you never get my perspective. You're going to get what the Bible says. That's right. Oh, hey, you know what I'm saying? But, but hold up. The Bible comes by way of God, and it was written through God. God okay. in the hands of man. And so we brought this in. See, the Bible was just pop out and it had to be written. So who wrote the Bible? That's my question to you. So would I, would I feel the spirit of God who he and light no, my, no I'm, I, I understand what you said, but my question, because you made a statement, and I, I don't like, I don't want to deal with a fluster of statements. I want to be able to deal with things accordingly, right? right. So you said that God wrote the Bible. Do you agree? Yes. But then he says it was written by the hands of man? Right. Okay, so let's see what the Bible says. Okay. Genesis 2 7 said that he breathed into the nostrils. Okay. And man. Hold on, hold on. You're digressing. You're digressing. Hold on, hold on. Yeah, okay. Let's just deal with that first topic. Then we're going to deal with that. Let's go. Psalms chapter 68, verse 11. The Lord gave the word. Who gave the word? The Lord gave the word. So, first and foremost, we have to understand when it comes down to the scriptures, God gave the word. There you go. When Moses went up to the mount with Joshua, guess what? Moses got the commandments and brought them down. Right. And he iterated them to the children of who? Israel. Okay, read. Great was the company of those that published it. Great was what? The company of those that published it. So, on a twofold sense, it says, Great was the company of those that published it. Who is the company that published God's word? Well, I'm going to just say God's children. God's children. The prophets. Do you agree with that? I, I totally, the prophets, right? I totally agree. Okay, now, it also, and that's why I said it's twofold. It's, it's, a, it's more than one meaning to the scriptures. So it says, great is the company of those that publish it. So give me Isaiah 28 and 11, stammering lips, because I want you to understand something. It was, it, it, it was written by God. I agree with you on that. But if we still, if, if we have to, if we speak a, if we've been scattered here in slavery as a result of our sin, and we've been forced to learn a different tongue, how are we going to be able to read what God says unless he put that, that spirit on that person to produce the scriptures in a way that we can understand? Would you agree? Okay, read that, Isaiah 28, 11. Isaiah chapter 28, verse 11. For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people. With stammering lips and another tongue, meaning another language, is how God would speak with us. You understand? Now, give me that in um in, in Genesis about Israel. Let's deal with Israel. Because I understand, brother. I understand your question, but it's a lot more serious things that we need to address than just knowing what Israel means. We must first come. We got to know where we come from in order to be going. Right, but what if I know I come from Israel and I'm not doing nothing that God says? What profit is that? It's none. You, exactly. And that's what exactly. I'm saying. You're doing the will. See, okay. when I see y'all out here, you're exactly. doing the will. Exactly. You actually. And we're going we to get what the will is. Read. Genesis chapter 32, verse 28. And he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For so this is our forefather Jacob, right? His name changed to Israel, right? Read. For as a prince hast thou power with God. So that's what his name means. Because why? He wrestled with an angel. Right. Who 
can like who out here can wrestle with an angel? Who? If an angel came out here right now, who really think from the sun up to sundown you can wrestle with an angel? To the point that Andrew said, you know what, he's doing too much. I got I gotta pop his hip out of socket. Just so he can calm down. For a prince has that power of God. You understand? So that's what Israel means, is that it? Is and that it? and with men and has prevailed. Okay. So does that answer your question as far as what Israel means? For a prince that has power with God? On that level, yes. Okay. On that level. Okay, now my question for you is. <laughs> I got so many. The, the, thank you. That's what it was. Um, the, you stated the will of God, right? What is the will of God? I'm asking you. Because you stated it, so I'm trying to see, you know, where you at. What is the will of God? God is to be the king to be here on earth. Okay, let's read that. Psalms 40 and 8. Psalms chapter 40, verse 8. I delight to do thy will, O my God. Yea, thy law is within my heart. So what is God's will? His what? His laws, right? So do you believe that you have to keep God's commandments? I know it. You know it? I know it. Now, do you keep God's commandments? I'm, I'm striving. Okay, I'm not with you on that. I'm, I'm, I'm not against you on that. Give me 2nd Edges uh, 14 to 34. 2nd Edges 14 to 34. Okay, so what you have to understand is if you're striving on praises, what, if I may ask you, what are some of the things you're striving and doing? Well, one of the things that I'm doing is like I was telling the brother, uh -huh. I go around and I help those who are less fortunate or those who don't understand anything about God. I was just telling a friend of mine when I got on the uh, subway, I always believed in God, but I didn't trust God. So where I came from, I had learned how to be a drug dealer and a hustler. Okay. I always knew how to get those things. But then I was stripped of it all to be a homeless on the street, hey. living in the bank. Hey, what you just said is scriptural. I'm going I'm to I'm deal with what you said. Give me some rock 40 and um, 13. We can hold that. We're going to come back. Well, you're going to hold it, but we're going to come back there. So, Rob Foy, you said you used to be a drug dealer, right? You was making good money. <laughs> <laughs> he most high stripped all that, right? All that. Everything gone, right? You know that's in the Bible? Yes. Yeah, Read that. Surah chapter 40, verse. No, we ain't talking about Job. Okay. We're talking about being a drug dealer. Okay. Getting unjust gains. Okay, come on. Read. Surah chapter 40, verse 13. The goods of the unjust shall. The goods of what? Of the unjust. So, brothers out here that's selling drugs to their people. Brothers out here trying to make a quick dollar instead of working a job. Uh -huh. It says the goods of the unjust shall be dried up like a river. Shall be dried up like a river. You you think about all of all of uh, the the renowned drug dealers that got locked up. What's the movie they did with um Denzel Washington? American, American Gangster. American Gangster. He came out of jail years later. He had nothing left. But in the process, he had a huge multi-million dollar home he had a whole lot of money right read it again from the top the goods of the unjust shall be dried up like a river uh -huh. and shall vanish with noise and shall vanish with noise meaning what is here one second and then it's gone the next right. because why you got it in an unjust way Come on. you understand yes sir. so the, so that's it on that so give me second address 1434 so this is for you brother i know you said that you're striving to keep god's laws so what I, have to, what I want you to understand is first and foremost, when you when you come into this understanding, you believe in the Bible, right? Okay. When you come into this understanding, it's steps that you must take in order to get yourself right with God, right? So let's read that. Second entrance, chapter 14, verse 34. Therefore, if so be that ye will subdue your own understanding and reform your hearts, ye shall be kept alive, and after death ye shall obtain mercy. So do you... I heard you say that, and correct me if I'm wrong, you said that you, you study like Morism? No, I study everything. Okay. I have a lot of y'all information. I study. Okay. So, what you have to understand is, the Bible says you have to subdue your own understanding. Meaning, all the stuff that you, you filter your thoughts and mind with, you now have to subdue those things and be and be retaught. How do you do that? Give me Acts. I, have an, I, can, I can tell you, but I have an example in the scriptures. Give me Acts 8. There you go, Hebrews 5 and 12, that's what I'm Then after that, give me Acts 8 and 30 by the Ethiopian unit. So, repeat your question again, just so for the listeners. How do you do that, right? Right. Okay. How do you get, how do you subdue your own understanding? Read. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 12. For when for the time you ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again. So it says, for when you have need, read it again from the top, I won't butcher. For when for
For the time you ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again. So it says you have need that one has to teach you again. Because I know you said earlier, you go out, you try to uplift people, you know, tell them about God, things of that nature, right? But you have to get yourself first. You have to get yourself right with God first. You understand? No. Then you can go and help this brother or that sister. How do you get yourself right with God? By keeping his commandments. People don't even realize they I've called her, she hasn't responded. I've called her more than a few times. But the Zulu nation, I'm like, what the hell is this? I know nobody know what I'm talking about. You'll leave me on the island by myself. I don't know what the hell Bishop's talking about. That's what y'all do. <laughs> then after class, yeah, I knew what you were talking about. I just don't want to be caught out there. What the hell is this? Get on my damn nerves. So read that again. Right. Give me Revelation 22 and 14. Right. It's not hard. Right. It's not hard. He said, how do you get yourself right with God? By keeping his commandments. You got kids, right? Yes, I do. Okay, if you tell your kids, I want you to clean the kitchen up after we finish eating, and they do it, are they not pleasing you? That's right. Same thing with God. We're his children. You see all of us? We're his children. We're his creation that he made in his image. But we don't, when, when we don't do what he told us to do, he judges us. He puts us in punishment. Okay. Hold on. Let's, let's finish reading this. Hold on. Okay. Just don't forget it. Read it. Revelation chapter 22, verse 14. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life. That they may have right to the tree of life, meaning eternal life. It says, blessed are they that do his commandments, not know his commandments, not study his commandments. You have to do. God is about action. First Samuel 2 and 3. God is about action. He's not about a brother that knows many, many things. Because Solomon knew many, many things. Solomon had many, many riches, and he still messed up. You understand what I'm saying? I do. Please. First Samuel chapter 2, verse 3. Talk no more so exceedingly proudly. Let not arrogancy come out of your mouth. For the Lord is a God of knowledge, of what? Of knowledge, uh -huh. and by Him actions are weighed. You see that, and by God, He's weighing your actions, the things that you're physically implementing in your life. He's not going to be worried about all the things that you know, because you can know so many things, but still be an unprofitable servant. You understand? So some of the things that you have to start doing is keeping God's commandments. Like today, for example, today is the Sabbath day. Did you know that? Okay, what are some of the things you're supposed to do on the Sabbath day? You're supposed to uh, read your word, you're supposed to lay back and rest. Okay, you're supposed to rest? Right. What else? Now, uh, pretty much, you know, this is when you get a chance to really unify with your family. So let me ask you a question. If, if, I was, if I was sitting here studying, right, I'm relaxing, I'm reading the word, I'm in the house. It's Saturday, right? I'm in the house, I'm reading the words. And I said, you know what, I'm getting hungry. I'm going uh, uh, um, to order some Domino's, have them delivered. You know, while I'm at the house. Would I be wrong for that? It's Saturday. It's the Sabbath day, right? I'm resting. I'm reading the word. But I'm, I'm, you know, I don't feel like going in the kitchen cooking. I just want to go and buy something. I, I'm, I'm, I'm also, I got to taste some pizza. If I call up Domino's and have them deliver pizza to my house, is that okay with God? On the Sabbath day? You have to eat, right? Now, that's what have to, that's what have to correct you when you're wrong. But that's where fasting comes in. No, 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 no. It's a difference between fasting and keep. I understand what fasting is, but it's a difference between fasting and keeping the Sabbath day holy. It's not just about resting, because this is why the people have the mindset of resting is why they never fill congregations. They always stay at home. They stay by themselves. They never do anything because they think, oh, I just stayed in the house. I'm not doing anything. I kept the Sabbath day. It's way more than that than right. just staying at home. Right. Because you're supposed to congregate on a Sabbath day. Well, I'm going to say this. That's where, like right now, you spiritually feeding me the Word. Okay. So this is keeping the Sabbath. 
So when right. we're, coming, we're, we're coming out of the pit, so now I'm eating the word, right? But I'm eating the word through you, making it manifest. Right. That's on a spiritual sense. But I'm talking about like, bro, if you literally hungry, you want something to eat. It's a Sabbath day. Can you buy? Can I go and order some food? Yes or no? Okay, give me Nehemiah 10. Nehemiah chapter 10 verse 31. And if the people of the land bring where or any victuals on the Sabbath day to sell. On what day? On the Sabbath day to sell. So if anybody wants to say, hey, Subway's open, but it's the Sabbath day. Hey, CVS is open. I need some allergy pills. Hey, the subway's open. I need a ride to get down to Mont Diamond so that way I can go shopping. What does God say? That we would not buy it of them on the Sabbath. So we're not, not supposed to be buying on the Sabbath day. You understand that? That is a law that we're supposed to keep. Today, I don't buy anything. I fill my, I fill my truck up fr Friday night before the sun go down, and I got gas to give me A and B, and guess what? My wife, she'll pack my lunch. I have food, so I ain't got to go out and buy anything. Right. You understand? It's ways around keeping God's commandments. Finish that up. Or on the holy day. Or on holy days, because what you got to understand is when you read Leviticus chapter 23, it outlines all the high holy days that we're supposed to be keeping, opposed to Christmas, Easter, Thanksgiving, New Year's Day, birthdays, all these pagan customs that's given. It's a whole list of high holy days that we're supposed to keep. And the Sabbath day was the first day high holy day that God instituted for us to keep. After he made the earth in seven days, we, what did God do? God. What did God, the creator of heaven and earth, do on the seventh day? He rested and he sanctified and hallowed the Sabbath day. So these are some of the things that come with keeping the Sabbath day holy. You got to rest. You can't buy and sell. Okay? Um, give me, um, what you got something? Yeah, give me 1623. Now, and, and I, I know, like I said, I mentioned earlier, I had my wife cook me dinner, whatever the case may be, right? You gotta prep, you gotta prep for the Sabbath day. You understand? Okay, read that. Exodus chapter 16, verse 23. And he said unto them, This is that which the Lord had said. Tomorrow is the rest of the holy Sabbath unto the Lord. So Moses is speaking to the children of Israel. He said, Look, tomorrow. <laughs> when tomorrow, when, when sundown tomorrow comes, that's going to be the start of the Sabbath day, right? Listen to what, God, what Moses instructed the people of, of Israel to do. Bake that which you will bake today. Bake that, cook that, whatever you're going to cook today, Friday before the sun goes down. Read. And see that you will see. And that which remaineth over, lay up for you to be kept until the morning. You see that? And make a little bit extra to hold you over for today. Today is the Sabbath day. So when you make dinner at night, you understand? Your wife at home, she's cooking everything. Hey, babe, look, make a little bit extra so that way tomorrow I can have a little bit for me to eat, take lunch, so I can have something so I ain't buying and selling and breaking the Sabbath day. It's not hard to keep God's law. But when we tell people, look, you you gotta, you gotta can't buy anything on the Sabbath, oh, what do you mean, brother? I gotta do something. But we can go to the market. We can get grocery for the whole week. But for, when, it, when, it, when the Sabbath day comes, we can't do that. One day. But what did Jesus say? We turn, huh? What did Jesus say? Huh? What did Jesus say? Yeah, what did he say about on the Sabbath day? In the New Testament. I noticed we're coming from the old law. No. Okay, yeah, we go to the New Testament. I ain't the, spirit, the letter of the law that we got. But okay. according to the spirit of the law, we live. I don't know what you're talking about. And that's what Jesus, right? Jesus came to manifest that. To show us that if the day you are hungry and I have money, and you're hungry, and I do not seek to get you something, then I'm breaking the law because have you want to others as you will have them do unto you. I'm not going to let nobody be there hungry because I'm stuck in time. This is a new era in time. Now. Right. So, and so that's where, 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 where I disagree is that when I say so you disagree with the scriptures? I'm, I'm a Noah and I'm not a believer. Hold on, hold on, brother. I don't believe brother. because believe is no proof of truth. Brother. You done had the mic for a long time. Oh, yeah, because this is my, my platform. Turn. This is what we're going to teach. Is this. Okay, thing, hold up, brother. If I put that Bible on that ground. You know is this. If I put this that is our Bible platform, ground, so read it. And it's a hole give me, down there. Huh? It's a hole down there. You going to call on that yeah. Bible or you going to call on No, give me Matthew 5 and 16. Matthew 5 and 16. Matthew 5 and 16. Yeah, we're gonna keep it real. We're gonna go to the New Testament. We're gonna go to the New Testament. Read. Luke chapter 4, verse 16. I'm not gonna pass the mic to you because this ain't your platform, brother. It's our platform, and we're gonna teach our people. Read. Luke chapter 4, verse 17. And there was delivered unto him the book of. 
Matthew 5. Matthew 5. Yeah, Matthew 5. The law. He said we're going to the Old Testament, right? Now you good. He said we're going to the Old Testament all the time. So let's go to the New Testament, right? Let's see what God says in the New Testament about the Old Testament. Matthew chapter 5, verse 16. Let your light. Matthew chapter 5, verse 17. Think not that I am come to destroy the law. So here it is. We read out of the law. The Old Testament, because you cannot understand the New Testament without reading the Old Testament. That's right. It's just common sense. Right. I'm not going to get a book about anything and start at the end of the book. Right. That's just common sense. Read. Think not that I am come to destroy the law uh -huh. or the prophets. Uh -huh. I am not come to destroy. Christ said he ain't coming to destroy. He ain't come to do nothing but the prophets said away. Read. But to fulfill. But what? To fulfill. And what did Christ fulfill? Give me John 129. Bring it out. Give me John 129. What did Christ fulfill? Did Christ fulfill the Old Testament, brother? So we ain't got to read out the New Testament. And then after that, give me Romans 6 and 1. John chapter 1 verse 29. Uh -huh. The next day, John see John see Jesus coming unto him uh -huh. and say, Behold the Lamb of God. The what? The Lamb of God. So what did John call Christ? I mean, what, um, yeah, what did John call Christ? The Lamb of God. What did Christ fulfill? The um the uh, service of animal sacrifice. Christ ain't fulfill everything else written. So when we telling you that you can't buy and sell on the Sabbath day, you can't buy and sell on the Sabbath day. You can't feed your lust. That's the problem with us as a people. We don't like to be disciplined. We don't like structure. The purpose of fasting, the purpose of fasting is to afflict your soul. I never said, brother, I never said fasting is part of Read that. Read it. Romans 6 and 1. Romans chapter 6, verse 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin? So shall we continue to break God's commandments? Shall we continue to break God's commandments? Read. That grace may abound. Because now we under grace in Christ. Shall we break God's commandments and bow on the Sabbath day? God forbid. God forbid, meaning no. God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Because if you did to sin, how are you going to live? You subject to sin. That's why the scripture say the wicked flee with no man pursued. Where the brother at now? He gone. He gone. He in the wind. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.